very excited, seriously excited for our new series called the DM series. This is Dating and Marriage, a direct message from God. Seriously, my creativity is lost on you people. I had to explain on Sunday morning that DM is direct message. Like, how did you guys, like, that's tech jargon. You guys should know this, not me. And I was very excited. Nobody complimented me. Very upset about it. Uh, thank you, Asher. Gold star for Asher. Thank you, Thomas. You get a gold star, too. Uh, remember, keep track of the gold stars. They mean nothing. All right. Uh, so... Seriously, I, I am all week long. I have been like a kid on Christmas morning, man. This is my favorite series in the entire year to preach about. This is something that God has snapped my heart in two over. This is something that burdens me to my bones, that young people such as yourself get no guidance from the church or a lot of times from parents or family members regarding marriage, dating, and the matters of the heart. Lord knows I was in your spot. If you don't have anybody willing to talk to you, know I was there first because I had to ask Google, and it led me down a rabbit trail of bad decisions and horrible advice. And so God has snapped my heart in two to make sure you don't have to go down that rabbit hole. I am here, and I believe God has called me here to tell you what the Word of God has to say. And so, I am so excited for this series. Please be praying for it. Um, again, I will say this at the beginning of every series. This is where the young adults meet, okay? Kids Clubhouse is over there. If you want, if you want to be a child about these things, do me a favor, go over there now, because I need your maturity to talk about mature things. All right, these are things that everybody in here, I don't care if you want to admit it or not, have been dealing with at some level. Older ones, more. Severely younger ones, probably not as much, but I got news for you. The great thing is, whether you're watching online and you're an adult, whether you're a leader, whether you're 12 years old, I don't care because every single thing I'm going to preach about in this series is applicable to your life. Maybe not in this current season, but it will be at some point. And if you're older, you, th maybe God's given you something to share with your children, with your grandchildren, with, with a neighbor. I don't know. I'm not God. But pay attention because this is all amazing stuff. And he's got some really good stuff here I'm excited to give you. So without further ado, tonight's message is going to be called, What is Love? Now, before we jump in to our romance series dealing with love, wouldn't it be nice if we knew what love was? See, young people, love you dearly, but you are all foolish because there are so many times in life you want to jump into things before you even know what it is. If I honestly said, I have the keys to my Mustang, anybody who wants to drive it can, how many of you would get the keys and get in that car and try and start it? Exactly. Pretty much every boy in here. How many of you actually know how to drive stick shift? Really, actually, not played it on a video game, not seen my dad do it a thousand times, but have actually done it. Judah, good for you. You're the last of a dying breed. Uh, but so many of you put your hands down, yet you said you would still try. Why? Because you're like, oh, that would be fun. I just, I don't care if I don't know how to do it. I'll do it. I once put in an application to be a doctor, not a doctor. But I was like, you know what? Why not throw my hat in the ring? What if they say yes? And I'll get to do surgery. It'd be cool. I'll fiddle around in somebody's brain, you know? I'll give it a shot. That's a horrible... Don't do that. Don't do that, man. And that's what this whole series is built around. We got to figure out what love is before we even start talking about it. Because let me remind you something before we start. If you feel something tonight, if something hits home with you, if you, if you feel this nudge on the inside, please, it is not me. If something moves your heart in this, in this next 45 minutes, you need to know it's not me. I can't make you feel loved. I can't give you revelation. I can't change your hearts and I can't change your minds. It's not within my power. It is the power of the Holy Spirit working in you, and I need you to understand that. Because I believe God wants to do some great things in people's lives tonight. But you need to understand that some of this is going to be rough. Some of this you're not going to like. You're not going to want to hear because it's going to point out things I'm doing wrong. 
things that I might have been engaging in, things, things I might have an issue with. But you've got to understand that's God convicting you, man. Lean into it. Don't run from it. Learn from it. Ask him to forgive you. And we'll get into that. I'm stepping on my toes. But anyway, so what is love? Love is a difficult question to answer because there's, there's many different kinds of love. And there's, uh, everybody loves differently, right? And so the problem is the world right now and the devil are trying to convince you of what they believe love is. Now, you have to understand the world and the devil do not know true love. I'm talking true biblical love. If you don't know what that is, you don't know love, young people. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Now, to help you kind of frame this in your, in your minds here, uh, imagine, everybody in here, uh, imagine your best friend is Michael Jordan, right? All right? I mean, I'm excited. I don't know about you boys. But Michael Jordan, if you don't know, is one of the greatest basketball players who ever lived. Now, imagine somebody comes up to you, and they're like, hey, you know Michael Jordan, right? And you're like, yeah, he's my best friend, right? And they're like, did you know Michael Jordan, 6'6", plays for the Chicago Bulls, won six championships? You're like, yeah. They walk away. Would you walk away thinking, yeah, that man knows Michael Jordan? No. See, he knew a, about the man, but he didn't know him. You did. Because best friends know each other's secrets. Best friends know each other's past. They, they, they're, they're there for each other in the good and, and bad. They care to convo every day. Like, that's what best friends are. That's what you got with MJ, Right? You call him MJ. Like, that guy didn't know him. There's too many Christians in this world who know the book of the Lord, but don't know the Lord of the book. Please let that sink in, young people. There's plenty of people who can recite Bible verses and be on the quiz bowl team for the Bible and answer all the Sunday school questions, but you don't know God. You don't know God's heart. You don't talk to him like you do a best friend. You don't pray without ceasing. You don't know God. You know of him. But if we're being honest, you don't know him. And see, this is what the world's doing with love, man. The world's like, oh, we know what love is. And, and we know everybody just love everybody and, and, and be your best self. And they know of biblical love. The devil knows of biblical love, but he does not know. True biblical love. People, listen to me. Your peers are calling out to you saying they know everything regarding the matters of the heart. They want to try and tell you they know how to love others. They do not. Unless they know Jesus Christ, they have no idea what real love is. And I'm going to explain it to you tonight so that you can be prepared, so that when somebody comes up to you and says, hey, Timmy, I know what real love is, Timmy's going to be like, uh, no, I know Jesus. I know real love, and that ain't it. I need you to be prepared, all right? So if we go back, rewind all the way back, Greek have four types of love, and we're going to go through them tonight. The first one is storge love. Storge love, I, oh, by the way, I've outdone myself. Now, you guys want to say Pastor Scott never stretches and never tries to do things I feel uncomfortable with. Uh, I got news for you. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to do an old definition, the original definition, the actual definition, and I'm going to do my, breast, my best to bring it into the new age, okay? I'm going to try and be young and hip for a minute. Please laugh at me. It's fine. I can take it. Um, so, Storge love is a love of a parent or a family member, okay? Also, the New Age definition, as I was asking God, I was like, Lord, what would be a good one for this? I came up with the fine, yeah, me too love. Now, this one breaks my heart because when your parents ask you lovingly, hey, Hannah, how was your day at school today? Fine. Up to your room you go. Or, some, or, or, or just comes to Judah and she goes, Judah, I love you. Yeah, me too, mom. 
Oh, come on, man. Love your parents. Please. If you don't hold family in high regard, my guess is you don't have people in your life worthy of that regard. And my heart breaks for you because we're all dealt a different hand in life. But I got news for you. This kind of family love, that's what this group is, man. That's what the church is. We're meant to be a family. We're meant to be here for one another. I have students who look at me like a father. I have students who look at me like a brother. I have students who look at me as, as a, a cool uncle. Like, it's fine, man. I want to have that love for you guys because we're a family. You guys got to understand this is the first kind. The second is... I always struggle saying this. It is philia. Philia love is a love of friends and close peers. Philia love is a love of friends and close peers. Uh, when I tried to figure out what I was going to make for the new age, I landed on the bro love and the ass queen love, okay? This is that cheerleading love. This is the love you have for your boys and for your girlfriends who, who you want to see succeed in life, you know? You cheer them on. You have that friendship, that close bond like only best friends have. It's a great love. And it's one that I hope you all experience because it's amazing. That's the second kind. Give me a second here. The third is Eros love. Eros love is a passionate, it's a romantic, it's a sensual kind of love. And God help me, the new definition is that Riz kind of love, okay? This is the one that makes you people act like you ain't got no sense. This is that, this is that kind of romantic love. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering whether I was going to do this or not. This is, this is the stupid kind of love uh, that made an idiot boy uh, walk up to a beautiful girl and ask her if she was tired because she had been running through his mind all day. This is, that, this is that kind of love that made that same stupid boy walk up to Becca and say, you know, uh, excuse me, ma'am, but is your love like the number pi? Irrational and endless. You know, this is that kind of love that made me, that made me go up to my wife and start check in the, the back of her pants, and she goes, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm just trying to make sure, see if these are, these are space pants. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, because your butt is out of this world, girl. You know, that's that kind of love. That's the kind of love I'm talking about, man. The one people write songs about, the one people say stupid things about. Gentlemen, quickest way to a young woman's heart, I swear, is through cheesy pickup lines, as long as they're tasteful. You can get her to giggle and, and compliment her in the same sentence. That, that's goals, young men. Uh, and I believe it. I still do it, man. Still, I, even though you get married, you still compliment your wife. You still try and sweep her off her feet. I promise you. That's a, that's a healthy marriage. Anyway, that's the third. Now, before we get into the fourth kind of love, we have to take a moment and pause. Because the first three are similar. The fourth is different. But the first three are problematic. Do you know what I mean by that? There's a big problem with the first three. We all have a problem with the first three because not only are these loves given, but these loves are also taken away. See, you have to understand the problem with these first three loves is we all have an example of how a family member you know, was, was ostracized from the family and pretty much kicked out because of something they did. We all, I, I don't know if you've experienced it, I pray not, but we all had a boyfriend or a girlfriend cheat on us or leave us or break up with us for, for an unknown reason. The love flowed, but there was an end to it. There was something or someone that made it stop. And what does that do? That causes heartache. It causes sadness. It causes pain. I mean, seriously, there are more songs written about the bad side of love than the good side. There's more breakup songs than there are rejoicing about love. And I hope you guys understand that 
these three loves are of the world. Not that you can't feel them, and not that it's wrong, but these three loves are worldly. You have to understand this. The circumstances dictate the love that flows. Very rarely can you find a human being who can love unconditionally. You don't believe me? Fine. I, I, I beg you to go on Instagram or, or TikTok and, and find, uh, there's, there's these stupid young men that I love to follow because they go to college towns uh, and, and they go out late at night when people are drinking and they get the honest truth from people and they ask them real questions, you know, what are you looking for in a man? And, and they ask them some hard hitting questions to see what they would say. By the way, alcohol lowers your inhibitions, but it also raises your ability to be truthful. And so be careful. Uh, but I, I encourage you, find uh, a woman who says, uh, you know, you ask the question, well, what if your husband cheated on you? Would you stay with him? What if he got laid off and stopped making money? What if he abused your children? What if he killed somebody and went to prison? These are, you can say yes, but we all know it would be tough, man, to love somebody through that. It would be 99% of people probably couldn't do it. You know, the divorce rate is so high. Why? Because people stopped loving each other. It flowed at one point or otherwise you wouldn't have gotten married. At some point it stopped. Something caused it to stop. These three loves, they're problematic because they're given and taken. The fourth love some of you have heard of this one before. This is agape love. The definition of this is God's love for humans. Make no mistake, young people. This is a one-way affection love. God loves you, period. There is nothing you have done to earn his love. There is nothing you can do to keep it. There is nothing you can do to lose it. Do you understand this? God loves you right where you are, no matter who you are. He, while I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. It's hanging on my door. My favorite verse in the Bible. Why? Because it says that in my stupidest moments, in my most boneheaded moment, in my most drunk moment, God loved me enough to die for me. That's real love, young people. Now, the New Age definition is my favorite because it is God's love for humans. It's unchanging. It's never wavering. It doesn't stop at any point in human history. God gave the same love to Adam as he gave to Moses, as he gave to my father, as he gives to me today, as he gave to Bella this morning. His love doesn't change. It's not wavering. And it never stops flowing. Stop treating God like the people who have hurt you. Stop making God pay for the love that stopped flowing from humans. It's not fair to hold God responsible for your father's actions who walked out on you. It's not fair to hold God responsible for the bully at school who doesn't love you. Don't you dare put that on God. God never stopped loving you. He loves each and every one of you to the day you die. I promise you. You need to understand agape love. If you don't understand agape love, you don't understand love. You have no business getting married. You have no business trying in life. You know why? Because if you don't understand this one, you can't do the first three. You can't honor your father and mother like the Bible says and love them properly if you don't know how Jesus loves you. Lord, have mercy for the man or woman who's going to get married without understanding agape love because I got news for you. There will come a time where your wife finally messes up and she does something. The world says you have the right to put her through the ringer and to make her pay and to be mean to her and you have the right. But if you know agape love, you will love her the way Christ loved you. You will show grace and mercy to your enemies. 
because Christ has loved you. If you don't believe me, turn to John 15, 10 through 11. It says, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. I don't know about you, but that's where I want to be. This is Jesus talking, by the way. He says, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love, meaning Jesus is our example. The way he lived his life, he remained in the father's love. Just as I have done it, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Oh, if that's not the gospel in a nutshell, man, I don't know what is. You got to understand, young people, what this verse is telling us is keeping the commands and rules of God is not to harm you. It's not to rob you of joy. It's not to keep you from having fun, though that's the lie the world says. It's to keep you from evil and heartache and pain. And it's to bring you joy. If you keep God's commands, you remain in his love and your joy will be complete. I got news for you. It's true. Last night I spent hours with with some of you ripping apart our new church and it was grueling work. Man, I woke up this morning, I got more blisters and cuts and scrapes on my hands. My body was so tired, I literally couldn't get myself out of bed. I pumped myself full of Advil and medication the night before and this morning, and I still, my hands are killing me right now holding this mic. But my soul is glowing because I have these cuts and scrapes for the kingdom of God. I kept his commands. I worked hard. I went to bed last night knowing I left it out all on the field, doing my best for the love of God. The joy I have. When I get to walk into that church and see what's done, I'm going to be like, yep, I helped do this. The joy that I will have when somebody's like, oh, my gosh, this is so different. It's so nice. Yeah, it is, because I helped. I was there. I participated. And I did my best for the love of the Lord. Guys, it brings you joy keeping these commands. I promise you. So I understand some of you are like, well, Pastor Scott, I get it. Read my Bible and, and, and keep the commands. Okay. What has that got anything to do with love? You're not, you're not listening, man. If you want to love people properly, if you want to make good decisions in your life, you have to understand agape love. Because if you don't, you're going to make foolish decisions. I promise you. Especially regarding love. If nobody's told you this, hear it here tonight. Love will blind you. King David, greatest king ever, became a bumbling idiot when he saw a naked girl bathing on a roof. He loved her, and his love turned him into a murderer, blinded him, and made him do foolish things. Like I just said, That love I have for my wife made me say cheesy pickup lines and put myself out on a line, which I would never do. How? Because the love I have for her sometimes blinds me. Be careful. You have to understand agape love in order to love people properly. So I came up. I asked the Lord. I said, help them. You know, help me, Lord, just for the rest of my life. Help my leaders for the rest of their lives. What What are ways, Lord, that we can keep ourselves out of trouble? And he came up with three questions to ask yourself when you're dealing with a dilemma, when you're dealing with a decision to be made. And the three questions are the first one is, what is your heart behind this? Or in other words, why am I about to do this? Ask yourself this, especially when it comes to dealing with love. Because I got news for you. If your your heart will tell you right away whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. If you're being honest, it only works if you're being honest with yourself. Because if my heart is angry, if my heart is upset, and the reason behind my decision is because I want to. I deserve this, Pastor Scott. I have the right 
to do this. Right there, we got a problem. Right there, if you're paying attention, you're about to do something stupid. Because anytime you base your decisions off how you feel or your emotions, you're about to make a mistake. Your heart is geared towards sin, young people. You are born in it, but praise the Lord, you don't have to die in it. My heart was born in sin, but I have been given a new one. The Lord has cleansed me of my sin. I don't die with sin in my heart. Now, does that mean it's not still geared towards sin? No, it is. But that's where the fighting comes in. That's where the daily battles and the struggles come in. That's where these questions are going to come in to help you. Ask yourself, what is the reason behind this? But remember, if you believe in your heart that this is God's will for me, if, you, if your heart behind this is because I think God's telling me to do this, that will always bear fruit. Even if you're wrong, God will still make good come out of it, I promise you. As long as your heart is truly for him, you can't go wrong. Always check your heart, young people. The second is, would I deserve to be forgiven? Now this one, I'm not going to lie to you, this one just sucks. I hate asking myself this question. It's really awful. Because what this question does is forces you to change perspective. Do I deserve to be loved like God's calling me to love my wife right now? The answer is no. I don't. But yet he still loves me. So what does that mean I need to do? Still love her. Do you see how this is like the worst question ever? Because it makes me acutely aware of what I've done wrong and minimizes what the other person has done wrong. I don't like that, Lord. This isn't fun. I, this, okay, you can stop talking now, Scott. Like, yeah, I wish I could because I don't want this to be true as much as you don't. But it is true. You have to understand that John 15, 12 through 13 says, My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. There you go, people. If you don't believe me, take it from God. You don't have the right to be angry. You don't have the right to withhold love because Christ has never withheld it from you. The Bible says, forgive lest ye be forgiven means unless I forgive the people who wrong me, God won't forgive me. And I take that verse very seriously. That's why if you ever heard Christian parents say, don't say you hate anybody. You're not supposed to hate people. This is what they're talking about, man. I don't care how bad these people are. I don't care. And don't get me wrong. It's not easy. I hear you on that. But being a Christian is not easy. Following the rules and commands of this book will make you pull your hair out. I'm going gray, and I believe it's because I've turned my heart closer to God each and every day. It gives me more stress, but he's there to renew me each and every morning. I promise you, love each other as Christ has loved you. The third question does that all make sense so far? Everybody tracking with me? We good? All right. The third question to ask yourself is, are my actions and desires in the will of God? Now, this is, this is a good one. This is my bread and butter tonight because this is a tough one to answer. See, again, I said it once, I'll say it again. God's commands are not in here to steal your joy. They're in here to help you and your decision-making process. They'll help you keep away from the evil things of this world, the things that actually want to destroy you. And they're here to help. We need to understand that God's rules are here to help. Now, the, the thing that bothers me is when you ask me the question, regarding sin, regarding the Bible, and you say the words, can I? 
Do you know why that bothers me deeply? Your heart is already wrong. Can I date, Pastor Scott? Can I drink, Pastor Scott? Can I get tattoos? Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I? The heart of can I is trying to figure out how close to the fire I can get without being burned. How close can I get to that line of sin without actually crossing over it? That's what you're asking if we're being honest with each other. The can I attitude will lead you to sin, I promise you. If you don't believe me, 1 Corinthians 6.12 says, I have the right to do everything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I, I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. What this verse is saying is the can I attitude. Well, you have the right to do anything. You have the capability to do anything. Nate can go to a tattoo parlor tomorrow and, and you can get a tattoo. You have that capability. You have that right. But is it beneficial for you? Is it beneficial for your life? See, the right question isn't, can I, God? It's, what's your will, God? Is this in the will of God for my life? Father, is, is dating right now, is getting married right now, is having a child right now in your will for my life? Because if not, keep me from it. But if it is, praise God, I'm in. The can I attitude. Do you know how many times, every time I do this series, you guys come up to me, Pastor Scott, when can I date? I get it. You don't want to hear this, but I love you too much to lie to you. Can I date at 13? No. You know why? Is it beneficial for you? Tell me right now the benefits at dating at 13 years old. Oh, I, well, well, I get to call somebody my boyfriend. There's not a benefit. It's just a fact. There's no benefit. What do you do? The benefit of, of dating at 13, you know what it is? Inviting in drama to your life. Inviting sexual temptation into your life. Inviting in battles you are ill-prepared to fight. That's the benefit. Are you able? Sure. I dated when I was in the first grade. I told you guys this. Stupid. I gave away my first kiss before I could even remember it. I wish I could get it back, but I can't. Do you understand that I, I know some of you don't want to hear this, but there is no benefit. You have to remember are you asking the right question? Are you asking the can I questions where you just want to do what you want to do? That's your heart behind it. Well, I want to. Wrong. That's not agape love. That's not understanding the heart of your father. That's not remaining in his will. That's not obeying his commands. Because I got news for you. Some of you come up to me and you're like, well, fine, Scott, well, how do I know if I'm in the will of God? How do I know if it's God's will? I don't understand. I don't ever hear him. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay. When was the last time you prayed? When was the last time you read the commands, that you read the rules regarding dating? Do you know they're in here? Do you know that God speaks to you through this book to guide you in life, to guide you into his will? He does. But yet you sit there and say, well, I, I, I don't hear from God. That's because you don't even talk to him. I don't hear from Eskimos in Antarctica. You know why? Because I've never reached out to one of them. Like, don't sit there and try and claim, well, he doesn't talk to me. It's because you're silent. And the moment he reaches out, like tonight, and he reaches out through a man of God who's trying to tell you the truth, you say, shut up, I don't want to listen. Let's be honest with each other. 
You want to say you're mature enough to date at 13 when we have a dating series and you can't even look me in the eye when I say the word sex, that you can't even come up to me and ask the questions that are in your mind regarding sex, and then you want to stand there and in the same breath tell me that you are mature enough to participate in the actions of it, that I can handle Dating at 13, you can't even handle talking to me about it. What in the world are we talking about? I love you too much to lie to you. I'm not going to send you off to wolves to be devoured because I got news for you. The devil loves this. He wants you to be confused. He wants you to just jump in and turn the keys to the Mustang before you know how to drive because that's when you make... Foolish decisions, and I got news for you. Decisions about love, lust, and sex are irreversible. They are decisions that you will carry with you for the rest of your days. They are decisions that cannot be undone. When it comes to matters of the heart, love plays for keeps. Young people, you need to understand this. When you give yourself away to another... You can't get it back. It can't be bought back. It can't be bribed back. It can't, you can't get it back. Do you understand how serious this is? The devil and the world are trying to convince you, dating in high school, dating in middle school. It's like candy land, man. We're just playing a game. It's fine. It's fun. It's not serious. It's incredibly serious. You are dealing with matters that you are ill-prepared to win. You're going to lose. And you're going to create bad habits that your future spouse will have to reap the benefits of. I promise you. Now, if you are engaging in these things currently. If you have a boyfriend, if you have a girlfriend, if you have had sex, you pay attention right now. Hear my words. God loves you. Agape love. There is nothing you can do that can stop him from loving you. He sees you. He loves you. He may not be happy with what you're doing, but make no mistake, he loves you. Now, the first thought you're going to have after hearing that is, well, 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 I've, I've been tempted. You know, I, I look at things I shouldn't look at, and I, I do things I shouldn't do sometimes, and you know what? Well, I'm worthless, and, 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 and God doesn't love me, and I'm useless, and I should just kill myself. And, and you're going to go down that rabbit hole. That's the first thing. Stop. That's not agape love. That's not the love God has for you. And that's not the truth. You need to understand that when you come to Jesus and you repent of your sins, you ask him for forgiveness. And God, again, read the Bible, is rich in mercy. He shows forgiveness and love to anyone who seeks it. No one is too far gone, especially a 13-year-old boy who, who has a girlfriend but is feeling convicted right now, I shouldn't. But here's the kicker and the thing. Again, I love you too much. I don't care if this hurts your feelings. I'm going to hurt them. Because here's the kicker. If you're feeling convicted right now, if you're like, yeah, I'm in a relationship I don't think I'm prepared for, you need to ask God for forgiveness. But part of repenting, the part everybody forgets, is the turning from your sin. It's not, sorry, God, and then go do tomorrow what you did today. No, it's, sorry, God, I need to try and fix this, which some of you, it means letting go of that relationship you're in. That tomorrow morning, I'm going to have to break up with somebody. Some of you said, well, yeah, I've had sex, and okay, you made a mistake. Repent, ask for forgiveness, but you know what you have to do now? You need to turn from that. You need to ask God, Lord, let me make a new covenant. Covenant's a, a biblical word for a promise. God, let me make a new promise with you that from this day forward, till I get married, I'm not going to do it again. That 
that's true repentance. That's me saying, God, I don't want my stupid heart. I want your word. I want you. I want everything you have for me. I want to receive your salvation. I want my name to be written in the book of life. I want to inherit the kingdom of heaven. I want to walk through the pearly gates and for you to say, welcome home, my good and faithful servant. If you want that life, if you want that power, if you want that salvation, if you want that mercy, if you want that agape love to flow in you and through you, that's all you have to do. Repent of your sins and turn from your old ways. Wednesday night was wing night at my favorite bar. Why am I not there right now? It was my favorite night of the week. Wednesday night is still my favorite night of the week, but you know why? Because I get to spend it with you guys. Because I'm in the will of God. I've turned from my old ways. That Scott that I hate telling you about, who's done stupid things and said stupid things, he's dead, man. Christ buried him in the grave that he rose out of. It ain't me. Can you say the same? Let the Lord convict you right now. Let him bring to mind the things that you're struggling with that nobody else knows about. We're going to have time here in a moment for you to lay those down at the altar and for you to ask him for forgiveness and show him, Lord, how do I do this? Now that I am completely out of sync with my notes. I hope you understand that this just isn't for love and the matters of the heart, but this is for all sin. I don't care if you lied to your parents or you stole a car or you murdered somebody. It's all evil in the eyes of the Lord. There's no sin that's worse than the other. They carry different consequences, absolutely, because he's a good and just God, but not one is better. All sin is evil in the eyes of the Lord, which means every single person on the planet Earth needs to repent. Needs to do exactly what I talked about. But when it comes to the matters of love, when it comes to the matters of your heart, becomes more difficult. Why? Because I love him. I love the idea of being in a relationship. I love my wife. Sometimes it clouds my judgment. Sometimes it makes it hard for me to follow this book. My problem right now is I coddle my wife too much. I try to be her knight in shining armor. I try to be her savior too much. God's constantly convicting me, saying, Scott, what are you doing? Are you her savior or am I? Because you need to hurt her feelings right now and push her closer to me. Why are you not loving her like I love you? And I, and I have to do the worst thing, but also I simultaneously the best thing which is fall on my hands and knees and cry out to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry. My heart breaks that I didn't listen. But forgive me and teach me how to do better tomorrow. Teach me how to lead her in the will of God. I promise you, young people, if you start Asking God to understand agape love, the love that he has for you. Everything else will fall into place when it comes to love in your life. You will be able to love your parents, your siblings, your friends, your boyfriends and girlfriends, and your husbands and wives completely differently and in accordance to his will. I promise you. Because again, John said it. Love everyone just as I have loved you.